Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Last week we took a look at the huge yet scientifically inaccurate Titanosaurus. Today we're still in the sauropod paddock taking a look at the other two residents, the Diplodocus and the Brontosaurus. I'm including both of these giants in one video as they share a lot of characteristics. Both dinosaurs could be found in the Jurassic period in the same area around what is now Colorado, Utah, Wyoming and Montana. They both belong to the same family of dinosaurs called the Diplodocidae. This family can be split into two subfamilies, the Apatosaurinae, which contains the Apatosaurus and the Brontosaurus, and the Diplodocinae, which contains several species including the Diplodocus. The first Diplodocus remains were found in 1877 by Benjamin Franklin Mudge and Samuel Wendell Wilson at Cannon City, Colorado. The remains were subsequently studied and named by O.C. Marsh during the Bone Wars. His name means a double long beam and was named after two long bone growths on the underside of its tail vertebrae. Although these bone growths have since been found in many more sauropods and are not unique to the Diplodocus. For a long time, the Diplodocus was considered to be the largest dinosaur in terms of length. Most of its incredible length is made up of its neck, which can be up to 6 metres long, and its tail, which is much longer again. Its total body length has been estimated at 32 metres long, and with a weight of around 10 to 16 tonnes. Although it was known as the longest dinosaur, it was actually fairly lightly built, with dinosaurs such as Brachiosaurus being much heavier. More recent discoveries of titanosaurs, such as Argentinosaurus, have since taken the crown. 19th century reconstructions of Diplodocus showed it wallowing in swamps with its legs splayed out to the side like a lizard, its tail dragging on the ground and its neck held almost vertical in an S shape. Today it seems obvious that the legs would need to be under the body. If they were held out to the side, the belly would need a trench dug under it to fit. But this idea did not take hold until the 1930s, when fossil footprint tracks of the Diplodocus were discovered which proved the legs were under the body. The tail is now known to be held off the ground, and it's believed that the end of the tail could be cracked like a whip, perhaps as a defence to scare off predators, or as a signalling device for members of its own species, or some other unknown purpose. The Diplodocus did not live in swamps or partially submerged in water. It was believed that an animal of this size would need to live in water to support its enormous weight. But there are two problems with this. First, the majority of sauropod fossils have been found in dry environments. And secondly, the pressure exerted on the lungs of a submerged sauropod would have made it extremely difficult, even impossible for it to breathe, even if its head was out of the water. Named just two years later in 1879, also by O.C. Marsh, Brontosaurus shares many characteristics with the Diplodocus. Here in arc it's shown to be much bigger than the Diplodocus, but in reality it was around 22 metres long, about 10 metres shorter in length than the Diplodocus, although they weighed about the same. Early reconstructions were very similar to those I described for the Diplodocus and have been refuted for the same reasons. The interesting facts about Brontosaurus relate to its name. For about 100 years there was confusion over the name, should it be Brontosaurus or Apatosaurus? O.C. Marsh named Apatosaurus in 1877 and Brontosaurus in 1879. But in 1903, Elmer S. Riggs came to the conclusion that the two dinosaurs were so similar they could not be told apart and should actually be called the same species, as since Apatosaurus was named first, Brontosaurus should become a synonym and be known as Apatosaurus. However, when the first skeleton of Apatosaurus was mounted in the American Museum of Natural History in 1905, it was labelled Brontosaurus. As far as science was concerned, Brontosaurus did not exist, but the display was incredibly popular and the public only knew the dinosaur by the name Brontosaurus. After this, all books aimed at the general public called it a Brontosaurus, and later dinosaur films would also include Brontosaurus. The display wasn't renamed Apatosaurus until 1995, when it received a new skull reconstruction based on more recent fossil discoveries. It wasn't until a very in-depth study of Apatosaurus fossils took place in 2015 that compared them to those that were once labelled Brontosaurus. It found that there was indeed enough of a difference to resurrect the species Brontosaurus. However, there are reportedly as many people against the resurrection as there are in favour of it. As always, time and more fossils will tell. Well that's all I have for you this week, as always I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. 
If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo when we'll be looking at the Overaptor. Until then, have a great week and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.